so I'm Gustavo Padova. Uh, I work for Collabora, a software engineer. I'm also one of the maintainers of the Bluetooth subsystem, the Linux kernel. And I'm going to talk today about using BlueZ in the automotive world. Uh, first, uh, just a basic overview of Bluetooth. I think most of people know about Bluetooth, but it's like a radio technology that uses the 2.4 gigahertz uh, band. It's designed like a cable repl replacement like 20 years ago, I think. Uh, used for short distances. In, there is a... <laughs> okay. Uh, so 10 years ago, when they introduced the, the, the simple pairing and other new features. And, and it's, it's specified by the Bluetooth Special Interest Group, which is built by many big companies like Intel and Microsoft, uh, and Toshiba, Samsung, I don't remember all of them, Lenovo. That's low power, low cost. And then BlueZ. BlueZ is the official Linux Bluetooth stack. It, being, it, it has been this since 2001 when Qualcomm uh, introduced the, the, the code the first time, the Linux kernel. I think it was 2.4 something, 2.4.6. Yeah. And BlueZ itself is, is not like planned for the, the final user. We provided the Buzz API for those who want to, to use Bluetooth features in Linux, and we, we are using most of the Linux desktop, and we were on Android until 4.1, and Tizen, Tonton, and many, many other devices. Some of the Bluesy features that we have is like a completely modular implementation, and most of the things in Bluesy are implemented through plugins, so it's, it's, really, it's really easy to enable, disable, or implement new stuff new profiles support to new stuff. And we have like real hard abstraction. So you just plug a new device, new Bluetooth device, it, it, it sure will work. Otherwise, we just need to add some device IDs or some small quirks and everything will work. Um, we have like a standard SOC interface through all layers that's pretty easy to use. But of course, we don't recommend you, we recommend you to use the Bluetooth D daemon on the user space. And recently we added a new interface to control uh, the Bluetooth device. It's called management interface. It's an in-kernel uh, code that handles a Bluetooth device. We used to do this in, in user space, like through raw sockets, but it wasn't the most op optimized thing we had. And now we, we are doing this through this management interface. And Bluezy also has a very simple Gbuzz API and it's pretty straightforward to use. Uh, one of the, the pieces that Bluezy interacts is Ophono. Uh, it's an open source telephony stack. It's a few feature telephony stack works with most of the modems out there. It's, it's really, really nice. The support for when it calls multiple modding, like through-way calling and everything, SMS. It has an AT chat library internally. And other pieces common with Daniel and Marcel are at Talk here today. And Coma is like focused on mobile, it has support to Ethernet, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, mobile data, and VPN. We, we, we do tethering for Wi-Fi and and Bluetooth there as well, and the Sash API, which was the focus of, of their talk here. And the other piece that BlueZ uses a lot, it's Pulse Audio. All profiles that, hand, that, that, that handles, handles audio goes through Pulse Audio. That's was that used in like everywhere in Linux systems. And what I really want to talk is What's the, the state for each profile that the, the, the automotive world is going to use? Uh, the most important ones are the, the first, like HTTP, AVRCP, HFP, and maybe PBAP, I think is the most important ones. Uh, 
So the, the first one is A2DP as a profile for high quality audio. Uh, in, in, in Bluetooth you have like the concept of holes. So there is one hole in HDP that's the source who provides audio to the other side and the other side is the sync hole. In, in the automotive world we are mostly interested in the sync hole and BlueZ has support to it up to the version 1.2 but the, the 1.2 version is like just some, some small change and we can support this like very quick, very easy. Uh, here we use like Pulsi Audio for the, the audio handling. The, this work is like uh, ongoing work for Blue Z5. Uh, there, is, there is a couple of paths on the Pulsi Audio main list that is implementing, he implemented the whole Bluetooth support in Pulsi Audio uh, for, for H2DP, HFP and yeah, H2DP and HFP. We only support the, the SBC codec, which is mandatory by the, the specification and the MPEG codec is still not supported. We, we should come up with this at some point. Hmm? Um, I'm not sure, I don't, I don't, I don't do you know? So when it comes to codec support, it really depends on what kind of phone and phone quality you get. Uh, most of them just use uh, SBC and stick with it. Some high-end phones like an iPhone, they have a couple of more codecs supported. Um, the other sides then, you need this on both sides to actually make this properly. So SBC is really the only one that is uh, mandatory uh, on, uh, on the side. Um, Part. But the last time I checked on the code, it was like saying one, say one point two. Yes, because the, the difference is like nothing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I checked that. Yes. So yeah, we support one point three because. Uh, Uh, next one is AVRCP. It's it's a profile that we use to control media over over Bluetooth, like the commands like play, pause, and then it, that was like version 1.0. Version 1.2 introduced like metadata, so then you can transfer over Bluetooth who is the artist or who, who is the album or the track number, many information about the the, the music or the video you are playing, and the. 1.5 introduced the new concept of media browsing, so now you can browse the, the folders and the, the library on the other Bluetooth device. And in BlueZ, currently we support both holes, but the media browsing is, is, is still a work in progress, is not, com not totally completely. I think Luis is, 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 has been working on this lately, and it's not a, a complete work yet. Um, then we have HFP. HFP is probably the most important profile that BlueZ ever had and, and in the automotive world I think is, is going to be the most used too. And it basically handles phone calls over Bluetooth and has some fancy features like so swap calls or, or three-way calling. That's pretty nice. And here we use Ophono for the whole call control and for Ophono, the Bluetooth, the Bluetooth HFP works like any any other mode, any any other modem, and use the, the the normal phone API to handle a Bluetooth Bluetooth phone. That's it's pretty. If if you have implemented something to handle phone, you are you are handling uh, Bluetooth phones as well. And Pulse Audio, as I said, is going to to handle handle the audio, and it's still a work in progress. We support the wideband speech. That's a feature from the 1.6 version of HFP. 
it's a better better quality audio for for HFP. It was introduced in the 310 kernel. Um, we have HSP. It's 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 like the same thing, but uh, quite old. And we usually it we can can use it mostly for VIP. It's not implemented in BlueZ. Not sure if if we we really have this use case, but it's something that we can have at some point if it's needed. It's a really simple profile. Doesn't have any complex call control. Doesn't have like true way calling. It's it's really really simple. And some really really old phones on only support it HSP. And SPP is like a serial port profile. It emulates serial ports on both sides and both devices that are connected. I mostly use it for for proprietary applications. If you want to build something proprietary over Bluetooth, you can like use this. Uh, BlueZ just provide like API when you can you can get like a socket of a serial port and then you put your ever data when you want on it. Um, the next one is Sync Access Profile. It's a way to to give remote access to your phone SIM card and the use case you can have in, in a car is it's like you have your phone and your car connects to your phone to to have access to the SIM the SIM card, and the car itself has to have like all the, the, the telephony hardware to use the remote SIM card to do phone calls or use mobile data. It's I, I I never seen anyone using it. Yeah. And I, 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 I never seen anyone in the automotive world as well. Usually people do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think the only benefit is that you don't need to, to transfer the, the the Bluetooth data over, like the, the call data over Bluetooth. You do directly to to the cell, the station. And the support we have is in in, in BlueZ your phone is like for one modem that has built-in SAP. So I don't I don't think anyone is is using this. Mm, no. So <laughs> the thing is, this spec was developed back in the days when we only had feature phones. And once you take a smartphone in your car, you run into a couple of issues. Um, as Daniel mentioned, uh, your SMS go now to your car unit, so they end up in your car and not be on your phone, which doesn't make a lot of sense once you leave the car. With your phone, you don't have the text message. In case you didn't read it, it's just in the car. Same as for your call history. So you call someone, the call history is in your, in your car now, and then you want to call this person back while you're outside the car, your call history is missing. The most important one is uh, if you're going to do uh, your uh, uh, network connection over 3G, LTE, or whatever, once the car owns the, uh, uh, owns the SIM card, your phone has no data connection whatsoever anymore. There's a white paper from the Bluetooth SIG released, uh, I think, half a year or a year ago that tries to fix this, where essentially uh, the phone then uses a PAN connection back into the car to get your network connection back. But let's face it, that's a white paper, and I've not heard anybody actually seriously considering implementing this one. So the profile is great if you want to use your car antenna that is outside your car because you finally can use that properly. The reality is with smartphones, it's so complicated to get this right that some companies and some phone manufacturers said, we are giving up on it. And this is where the real problem comes from. So I think some of the things like inductive antenna or whatever they came up with is something more to solve the problem to get the radiation of the GSM uh, cellular part out, out of the car to the car antenna. But Reality of the fact is HFP is the one solution to deal with these ones and not uh, sub anymore. Yep. 
and, and then PAN as, as basically a shared internet connection over Bluetooth. And we support Truth Command and BlueZ. And both holes, like you can share a connection or you can, or you can get a connection from, from some device. And the last version is 1.2 and BlueZ support both of them. And we have as well the dial-up network as, as a try to mimic a dial-up mode in over Bluetooth. It's a old specification from the Bluetooth SIG and PAN is the new one it's, and it works uh, much better. And, but we have some old phones that is only support Dune. I think the, the Nokia Symbian only supports Doom and some other phones. So, uh, yeah, 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 I've implemented that part. So, um, we, when we have discussed that problem, um, what happens if you have a phone which supports both profile at the same time? So, um, where, where do you do the selection? And, and we ended up discussing forth and back, and currently we have not solved it, right? Which is expose it to the user space, um, pawn and done at the same time. And we have no clue how to identify if, if the network belongs, if PAN and, and DAWN network belongs to the same device. So I'm still trying to figure out how we want to solve that, or we just say, okay, DAWN dies and we do not care. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, just request. <laughs> so we do not care. Okay. So, um, for the record, it's deprecated. <laughs> Let's forget about it then. <laughs> so yeah, it should be using pen and not doing this. And another important profile is phone book access, and it basically access contacts over Bluetooth. And we implement the last, latest version. But the profile is like not really good for the use case in the car because every time you connect to, to the to the phone, we have to download all the contacts again. Or there is like no way to sync. You can keep the contacts, but if you want to sync, there is like no way. I'm not sure if the Bluetooth six is working on, on something uh, on this right now, but it, it's really something that we need because otherwise, every time you go to a car and you need, you want to sync like new contacts you add you need to do a whole download of the contacts. And map is a really nice one too. You can like access, access email and SMS, or and not only access, but read and uh, update, write emails and SMS over Bluetooth. It's, it's really a really nice one. We, the latest spec version is 1.2 in Bluezy. We still have the 1.0 last time I checked. And OPP is a very famous one. It's basically for transfer files. I'm not sure if this will be really useful in cars, but we support both holes in the last specification version. And there is a new profile introduced by the Bluetooth 6, I think, last year. I don't know. As the global navigation satellite system profile, it's basically you can share your GPS device with another device over Bluetooth, and it, it uses like the standard standard Enemea protocol, and it needs to be handled by some GPS application because BlueZ doesn't really talk this protocol. We will basically handle a file file descriptor to some application that wants to to handle this, so we can say that we have kind of support for this. We just need some GPS application to handle the, the name protocol and get localization. And another thing that could be useful in cars is high speed. And it's basically a way to transport Bluetooth data over the, the Wi-Fi radio. And if your system needs like more bandwidth, you can like transparently uh, move to another radio 
and go from Bluetooth to Wi-Fi and get a, a much higher transfer bandwidth. It's like comp completely uh, abstracted for the user. It, it goes automatically if you set the, the proper sets in the in the kernel. And that's a that's a good good thing to do if you if you need more bandwidth. Not sure if it's going to be really used in, in cars. Depends on the automakers. And we only support full full Mac in Linux. That runs over L2 cap. It's transparent. You just need to set some some configurations in in the kernel. Yes, yes. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. John. I don't know anyone. Do you know Marcel? <laughs> okay, and and the thing I think is the most important right now for Blue Z is testing. We have we have support for many many profiles. They are kind of in a good shape, uh, but. Bluetooth products usually need lots and lots of testing to be compatible with, with the many devices that are out there. Um, and Blue Z was like initially focused on mobile, which is basically the other side of the, the use case. And automotive is like, is like a new vertical. So we, we still don't have that many testing on, on this side. Uh, one of the ideas is like create new test frameworks for Blue Z, some some piece of codes that can can handle many tests automatically, and try to publish this and show people everywhere that Blue Z actually works for the automotive world. Mm, no, I, I'm I'm I start some code on this, but only a week. Of code like last week, I don't have anything really, really working right now. But it is is one of the ideas. I'm not sure which which uh, which things I'm going to implement or. Yeah. It's something really really new. And and some conclusion, Blue of course is open source, for for people. That wants to put it, it in, in a car, you can like share your development costs and maintenance costs, and of course you can choose whatever company to get support. Collaborate is one of those companies, and we don't have any license fees, of course. Well, that's it. it was quick. Uh, thank you. All. Any more questions? Okay, thank you.